Hey guys, how's it going? I'm the Nerd Next Door, and today I was going to talk about how scientists detect extrasolar planets. So an extrasolar planet is just a planet that is outside of our solar system. So planets like Uranus and Mercury and Mars and Venus, those are not extrasolar planets. An extrasolar planet has to be going around another star. That's what we mean by extrasolar. So there's actually quite a few different ways to detect extrasolar planets, but the big two is the transit method and the radial velocity method. So both these methods are indirect methods. What that means is we're not looking at planets and actually photographing them. So when astronomers find bodies inside the solar system, they like to directly image them. And what that means is they're just taking a picture of them. So that's what they're looking for is actual objects with a camera that are moving. And some of these objects that we see out in the Kuiper Belt, for example, are really small. They take up like one pixel, but they're still there and we can see them on camera. So we don't usually see extrasolar planets. We can't directly image them. We can't take pictures of them because compared to the star that they're going around, they're not very bright. So what we do instead is we use indirect methods, non-picture methods to find them. So the radio velocity method is a very, very common method of detecting extrasolar planets. And what that does, it's also called the wobble method. Sometimes you'll see it called the wobble method, or if you, if you hear anything about a wobble, it's probably the radial velocity method. So what happens with gravity, the reason that we're orbiting around the sun is because we are caught in the sun's gravity, right? We want to rotate around the sun. However, if you remember, gravity is one of those things that it's kind of a two-way street. Everything exerts a force, a gravitational force, on everything else. So if we have the sun, we'll call it the primary body, and we have Jupiter, we'll call it the secondary body, that mass is going to be pulling on the sun. Now the sun is much, much bigger than Jupiter, right? Way, way bigger. However, it's still going to start to kind of wobble because Jupiter is pulling on it. As Jupiter goes around, the star is actually shifting around. So that's what's happening with the Jupiter-Sun system. So you have a big enough object, a star, and a big enough body, say Jupiter, pulling on that primary body, you're going to get a wobble. And that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna have this wobbling effect. Now that we've covered that, what happens with that wobble is if a star, let's say we're here on Earth, we see a star way out there, and the star is wobbling. Well, how can we detect that wobble? We can do it with something called spectroscopy and the Doppler shift. So if, if you don't know what these things are, that's okay. All you really need to know is that when an object is moving towards us, the light that we're getting is different. We can spectroscopically, we can take that light apart, look at it and go, and this light is different than light as something is traveling away from us. Now this isn't really a property of nearness and farness. What this is a property of is moving towards us or moving away from us. So there has to actually be movement for us to detect the difference in that light, that shift in the light. But if something is wobbling, we can see this very regular, very periodic, the light get squished, the light gets lengthened out. Light gets squished, light gets lengthened out. So we can see something coming towards us and away from us, towards us and away from us. And even if that difference is very, very small on an astronomical level, and this object, this star, is very far away from us, we can conclude that there is something pulling on that star, something that we don't see. Now, depending on how much that thing is pulling on the star, we can pretty much determine the mass of the thing, right? If we see that this star has a really large wobble, well, there's probably a really big planet going around this star. Now, of course, things are much, much hairier in real life. The, that, that's an oversimplified version. The distance between a large body and a much larger star does matter. But this is the indirect method, the radial velocity method of finding stars based on their wobbling. It's good to be a geek. It's good to be a So a lot of times so a lot of times when so when astronomers find bodies in the solar so what radio velocity 
Philosophy? Yeah, that's a word. Philosophy. It's like velocity and philosophy together. Yeah.